the infant Jesus. A Savior was born to you, the Redeemer, who descended from above in order to set you free and bring salvation to you. Your humans suffered utmost adversity for you were held captive by Satan, you were in his power and lacked the strength of will to free yourselves from him. Your souls were ailing and a physician had to come to heal you, a strong Savior had to come to release you, one had to come to bring you peace. Salvation came to earth in a child which was born in the midst of you, which, in great poverty, came into the world in a stable, yet his birth alone already testified to his divine origin, his extraordinary task and his great love for people, for an exceedingly bright light shone above the child, and this light entered into the hearts of those who were allowed to behold it and who recognized his divine mission. For the eternal light itself came to earth, it shone in the darkness which had cast a shadow across the whole earth. The eternal love had embodied itself in the child Jesus, and the ray of love shone brightly in this significant night when the child Jesus came into the world. And the human race should have rejoiced and cheered about the eternal love's act of compassion to descend to earth and to bring light into the darkness. But humanity kept its eyes closed so as not to have to see the light, apart from a few who knew of their Savior and called for help, who cried for a Savior and gladly opened themselves to the light from above. And to these few the eternal love came to help. And it came to pass what seers and prophets had proclaimed a long time before. The Messiah came into the world, the bringer of light. The Son of God came down to earth. He wanted to redeem the world from sin because he took pity upon humanity which, bowed down with sorrow, almost broke down under the burden of sin and was unable to defend itself against the constraints placed on it by God's adversary. These constraints caused humanity to stray increasingly more towards the abyss, as it obeyed every command by the enemy of souls because it was too weak to resist, which thereby only increased its burden of sin from which it would never be able to release itself. The Son of God descended to earth, a most elevated being of light from God, which knew of the fallen being's hardship offered itself to carry the infinitely great sin on behalf of humanity and to redeem it through a self-sacrifice on earth as a human being, through suffering an extremely painful death on the cross. This being of light took abode in the child Jesus in order to accomplish its mission to redeem the human race from sin and its consequences. And the brightest light shone forth when the child was born a light which called all those of good will, who waited for their Messiah and who beseechingly prayed to God in their distress. It was an act of grace of inconceivable significance, for the whole of the universe participated in it. Heaven and earth touched each other at the moment of Jesus' birth. The bridge was established from one kingdom to the other. War was declared on God's adversary by the man Jesus who indeed remained victorious. For he fought for and with God, who had sent him to earth and taken abode in him, who permeated him completely. Thus God manifested himself because he, being the eternal love, was able to take complete possession of a human being who had unfolded the love within himself to utmost perfection who had shaped himself into a vessel for the divine spirit, into the shell of the eternal deity. He could justifiably say the Father and I are one. He brought people redemption, he gave them light, he brought salvation for their souls, for through his crucifixion he became victorious over the one who wanted to keep the souls in the abyss and from whom people were unable to release themselves on their own. He became their redeemer, their savior from sin and death. Amen.